Howdy. Sign-ins are hard. Okay, um, let's just keep it simple. Hello, my name is Miss Gwendolyn Taylor and I am Lincoln High School's new health teacher. It has been brought to my attention that my lesson plans for my health education course was inappropriate to discuss with my ninth grade class. As I have recently been informed, the lesson plans are meant to be discussed at home with the parents and not in my class. However, I wanted to give the information to my students that they may not receive in their home environment or more clarification than what they may receive from media sources. You see, I teach what many would call sex education in my health class. Nothing unusual for the schools that provide this education. But many schools rarely provide sexual health information for their students and instead focus on a more abstinence-only approach. It's the standard for Ohio-based schools because the law points us in that direction. I mean, it's not even a required part for the health education curriculum. Based on the Ohio law section 3313.6011, and I quote, instruction in venereal disease education pursuant of the revised code shall emphasize that abstinence from sexual activity is the only protection that is 100% effective against unwanted pregnancy, sexually transmitted disease, and the sexual transmission of a virus that causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Although there is a concern when it comes to venereal disease, I would first like to point out that not only is venereal disease a negative term, but it should not be the only thing we discuss in sexual health. To be frank, it's kind of an outdated term. So with respect to the board and my fellow audience, I will be using the term sexual health instead of venereal disease, mainly because the term just makes me sad. You see, I'm the kind of teacher who likes to encourage her students to talk about this in a positive and open-minded manner. I've always been known as the quirky type of teacher. I've always imagined myself starting my health class with a little bit of personality. All right, class, as you may have realized, this class is your health class. Now we've already discussed a lot about your body, your nutrition, your behaviors, well, health. But the next few weeks, we're going to be discussing a little bit more about sexual health. Or in other words, sex. Yeah, yeah, let it all out. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that can be. Let's talk about... Okay, I cannot be that old. You all don't know that song? Okay, um, we're going to start class <laughs> now. Many teachers, like myself, may have health education backgrounds, but not specifically sexual health education. Unfortunately, not many teachers are very keen on teaching a topic that falls into the taboo category. I don't entirely blame them. The laws Ohio has for health education is limited on what should be taught. Yet there is no direction when it comes to sexual health education. There's a fear of teaching something that 
will always have a brick wall blocking its path for information. Luckily for me, I like a challenge. Now, when I say sexual health education, I'm not talking about what is the best sex position you can enjoy with your partner or 100 best ways to please your lover or that sex is not that big of a deal decision. <laughs> Far from it. I'm talking about comprehensive sexual health education. The goal is to encourage young adults to not only know about sexual health, but to understand how it can influence certain experiences. It encompasses the human body and development process, healthy relationships, building communication skills, and recognizing safety and empowerment with medically accurate and honest education with no shame and no judgment. So it's important as teachers to understand how we relay information that is age and developmentally appropriate for our students. You see, my class is more than just a lesson plan. Sexual health is a way of life. It encourages the understanding of human rights that these students should know about. As young adults, they are sheltered and hidden from the dangerous world of sexual activity and instead hear fear tactics to encourage them to refrain from having any sexual activity without really understanding the reasons why. It's like that scene from Mean Girls where the uh, athletic coach says, don't have sex because you'll get pregnant and die. Okay, who wants condoms? That's how sexual health is taught in our schools. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And the administration expects the students to follow through, let alone believe the bull sh crap. Bull crap. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see, the thing is, that's how I started talking about sexual health in my classes. Today, class, I'm going to teach you the meaning of abstinence. Abstinence means the act or practice of not doing something or refraining from indulging in certain behaviors. There are many ways we may practice abstinence, such as alcohol, substance abuse, eating way too much chocolate, murder, jumping into a pile of manure in the pasture. However, today we're going to be talking about sexual activity and why abstinence is important to handle those sexually active urges. Telling students to refrain from sexual activity has been proven to be ineffective and unrealistic. There are so many ways teachers use scare tactics on students to avoid from participating in sexual activity. It's insane with the amount of stories I've heard about abstinence only approaches. I once had a friend tell me that their health education class consisted of their teacher telling them about a paper when it bursts into flames and just disappears from their hand. That's what happens when they engage in sexual activity. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. As much as I uh, love symbolism, that one kind of got away from me. I've also heard as young adults, if they haven't engaged in sexual activity, they're considered a blooming flower. But then once they engage in sexual activity, the flower is destroyed. And the teacher would continue to say, and nobody wants a destroyed flower. I'm sorry, but that is not going to happen in my garden. Oh, classroom. Now, I know many of you may be curious about exploring sexual relations, especially since many of you are getting older and are wanting to form relationships with different people. It's expected. Human nature. No worries. However, 
There are risks when engaging in sexual activity that may lead to unintended pregnancies or sexually transmitted infections or STIs. So the most effective way to avoid any of those risky behaviors is by practicing abstinence. It is 100% the most effective way to protect yourself and your partner from anything that you may regret having in the future. When I'm talking about abstinence in my class, it's just a brick wall blocking its path to knowledge and understanding. I'm hitting this wall with the message of abstinence, and all it does is confuses and separates the students around me. It's like the class thinks it's an absolute joke and it serves no purpose for them. It's because they know what's beyond that abstinence wall. They know that beyond the wall, it's more than just the act of reproduction. They know that beyond the wall, it's pleasurable. It's a way of defining relationships. It's a rite of passage to adulthood, whatever the case may be. That's how media is portraying sexual activity. Heck, it's how adults address the topic. But the wall the school system has built it's blocking the information about best practices to protect our students that come with those choices. Teenagers are smart, but they're also looking for support and guidance. We're alienating our students because we feel they are too young to experience it and cannot possibly understand the responsibilities that come with this step. They may not understand the responsibilities because we're not talking about it. 